Is the iPhone 14 Pro a worthy upgrade or is it a phone that you should happily skip and wait till next year? This is the truth about the iPhone 14 Pro. So we have two Pro models this year, the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max, again at 6.1 inches and 6.7 inches respectively, with a larger camera bump compared to the iPhone 13 Pro. The two Pro models come in four colors, the black, silver and gold that we know, and a new deep purple. I'm also aware though that there's been a lot of speculation around the price of the iPhone 14 and the Pro models, especially a lot of people thought that the Pro models would be more expensive this year, but thankfully that is actually not the case. In terms of storage, the Pro models are available in 128 gigabytes, 256 gigabytes, 512 gigabytes and one terabyte. So I went for the 128 gigabyte model because I'm not the type of person to download movies and music straight onto my phone. And I'm also not looking to shoot ProRes video, but I am really keen to make the most out of the iCloud photo library. However, if you're somebody that wants to do those things, like shoot ProRes and download music and movies onto your phone, then I will recommend you definitely go for at least the 256 gigabyte version or above. If you plan to do the opposite, then I will definitely recommend you go for the 256 gigabyte and above for all your needs. While Apple hasn't reinvented the iPhone design language of its latest device, the iPhone 14 Pro is a worthwhile freshening of the line. From the back, the iPhone 14 Pro is a near replica of the 13 Pro. Both have a stainless steel frame with a brushed glass back and the glorious shiny screen, which is protected by Apple's ceramic shield, a transparent material that contains ceramic crystals for extra screen protection. But the iPhone 14 Pro still has the same flat squared off chassis that still feels slightly too sharp in your hand. Apple hasn't tinkered the button placement, keeping the volume buttons, the silent slider, and power sleep Siri buttons in the same spots. The microphone ports and speaker grills are the same, and yes, even the lightning port. One day the iPhone will feature a USB-C port, but not today. There is one notable exterior difference for US customers. There's no SIM slot above or below the volume buttons. Instead, the entire iPhone 14 line in the US is eSIM only. Now, although I do think this is like a clean look, but it remains to be seen how US customers will truly accept this, you know, this new change. When it comes to display, Apple hasn't upgraded the screen resolution on the iPhone 14 Pro. At 2556 by 1179, the screen here has only marginally more pixels than the one on the iPhone 13 Pro. And this Super Retina XDR OLED is refined fashioned around a brand new element, the dynamic island. This oblong shape floating just millimeters from the top of the screen redefines iPhone iconography. Lots of phones have screen punch holes in this, but no one has done anything like this before. Also upgraded on the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max is the ProMotion Display's adaptive refresh rate, which again starts at 10 hertz and goes up to 120 hertz. The slower refresh rates are used for more static content and the faster ones for games and videos. This adaptability means the screen will eat less energy when it doesn't need to constantly update the display. There's another refresh rate number that's key to the iPhone 14 Pro lineup, 1 hertz. This is for the iPhone 14 Pro's new always on display feature. It's taken a long time for Apple to bring such functionality to iPhones but haven't got there. Apple has indeed outdone many of its competitors in this regard. This is one of the better looking and more colorful always on displays I've ever seen. To start, when your lock screen goes into the always on mode, it keeps your wallpaper or album art visible. And Apple even massages the colors so they still look okay. The time and date and your lock screen widgets are of course visible, as are your notifications. Keeping your lock screen artwork visible isn't the only refinement that Apple have made. Like most Android phones, the screen completely turns off when you put it in your bag, in your pocket, or face down on the table. So from my time of using the iPhone 14 Pro, I started to realize how much battery life always on display drains and it's a considerable amount. So the first three days I was using this phone, um, I had always on display on and by the end of the day, I would have about five to 10% battery life. I'm not the type of person that uses my phone like heavily, like I don't use so many apps. I'm quite minimal with the way I use my iPhone. So I decided to do a little bit of an experiment. I turned off always on display, but still kept the way I used my iPhone the same. By the end of the day, I would have about 50 to 60% battery life, you know, which is a considerable amount. I mean, it's a cool feature, don't get me wrong, but I don't see why my phone should just be draining battery if I'm not using it. 
Do you get what I'm trying to say? I might as well just have it off or just have the screen off completely. The Dynamic Island is perhaps Apple's best interface in years and it definitely lives up to its name by seemingly changing shape and utility based on the app being used. For example, if you connect your AirPods, the little island extends for a few seconds to show the connection message. Use Face ID and instead of a bubble in the middle of your screen, the island extends downward to show the Face ID alert. Play music and get album art and a fun little waveform animation. These are just some of the cool things Dynamic Island Island can do. One thing I was worried about was how Dynamic Island would handle more than one background activity going on at once, but it seems like Apple are full about this. The island splits which is really cool and efficient so I don't need to swap apps. So the Dynamic Island does more than display live information about background activities. It's interactive in simple and intuitive ways. Tap on any activity up there and you hop right over to the associated app. Tap and hold and the island expands to show more information and mini controls. So think Think of this new feature as a home base for anything that's going on with your iPhone. I definitely think it's one of those rare design inventions that adds capability while reducing complexity. The truth is I found Dynamic Island such a delight to use. Not only does it add utility to the iPhone, but it actually makes it easier to use. And in my opinion, it's the defining characteristic of what it means to be an iPhone. Apple hasn't changed up the camera array's design, but virtually everything about the iPhone 14 Pro's three rear cameras is new. The three lenses are a 48 megapixel wide, 12 megapixel ultra wide, and 12 megapixel telephoto. These are new lenses and large sensors, and the most interesting camera is undoubtedly the 48 megapixel sensor. This is Apple's first pixel binning sensor, and that means it captures 12 megapixel images with four pixels combined into one effective large pixel, which results in better low light performance and color fidelity. Samsung's been doing pixel binning for a while now, and the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra features a 108 megapixel camera with nine pixel binning potential. The 48 megapixel sensor adds the ability to shoot full resolution raw images, or Though you have to enable the option in the camera settings, you won't see RAW as an option in the camera app by default. RAW images are uncompressed photos that give you more depth to edit in editing applications like Adobe Photoshop and mobile apps like Adobe Lightroom. The truth is the iPhone 14 Pro still represents something special in the field of the Apple iPhone photographic technology and it still remains the best camera in the market from my time just using the iPhone to take pictures. On the video front, Apple has upgraded cinematic mode to support 4K 30 frames per second. The footage looks great and every time you use this mode, you'll feel like a real cinematographer. Unfortunately, the iPhone 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max are inheriting one of the iPhone 13 Pro's shortcomings. If you want to shoot video in 4K ProRes, you will need to buy an iPhone 14 Pro or Pro Max with at least 256 gigabytes of storage. Otherwise, you'll be capped at 1080p HD videos at 30 frames per second. ProRes video is an advanced codec developed by Apple that allows you to capture more detail in your images. So it's commonly used by professional filmmakers, but ProRes has actually been about since 2007, but it was only possible to shoot ProRes video on iPhone starting from last year's models, iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max. There's also a new video mode, Action. The digital stabilization technology employed in this mode works by cropping away excessive movement until you have a smooth subject in the center of your video. Action mode shooting tops out at 2.8K rather than 4K and works well as long as you understand that you're going to be losing visual information every time you shoot. Apple has not added 8K video and honestly I don't think 8K is needed but for now I believe that HD and 4K are more than sufficient for all your filmmaking needs as most platforms don't support 8K video. The iPhone 14 Pro launches the latest iOS installment iOS 16 with a new customizable lock screen, media player and other refinements. But there are a couple of new features that may not sound quite as cool, but might one day save your life. So first is SOS via satellite. Thanks to a combination of new hardware, software and infrastructure, you'll be able to alert emergency services if you are lost in a mountain or in trouble in the middle of nowhere with no signal. From there on, you can select what type of emergency you have and help will be hopefully on the way as soon as possible. The other important feature is crash detection, which can detect whether you're in a serious car crash. So your iPhone will then give you a short countdown for you to react. And if no reaction follows, it will again call emergency services. My hope though, is that you guys won't ever have to use this feature. But I've got to say bravo to Apple for this, because I know everybody's going to be focusing on Dynamic Island, but any feature that can potentially save your life is just a major win for me. So well done Apple for this. For years, iPhones have had more processing power than people will ever need in their day-to-day -day use. I can say that this is definitely true for this year's A16 Bionic chip. According to Apple, the A16 Bionic chip is 40% faster and uses just one third of 
the power of its competitors, which is pretty impressive. However, there is one area where I found the A16 Bionic here to be a noticeably faster than last year's model, and that's Face ID Unlock. But the truth is, besides the improvements to Face ID, I haven't actually noticed any major step up boost in performance or speed with the A16 compared to last year's A15 chip. That's another way of me saying that the iPhone 14 Pro is still powerful, still efficient, and will still be reliable for years down the line. As for the battery, the iPhone 14 Pro still keeps the same all day battery life as the 13 Pro. This is not a bad thing. The 13 Pro was a considerable upgrade from previous generations, but still I hope for a bit more. The 14 Pro comes with 3,200 mAh battery, a slight 3% increase from the 3,095 mAh battery on the 13 Pro. So from my experience, I can easily get through the whole day with the 14 Pro. I only have to just charge it every night, you know. Apple doesn't supply a charger with the iPhone 14 Pro, but it does put a USB type C to lightning cable in the box. One thing that's missing that I hope gets introduced to the iPhones is faster charging technology. This is an area I feel Android phones from other manufacturers like Oppo and Xiaomi are really excelling and killing it. And I just think that faster charging will definitely, you know, take the iPhone experience to even greater heights, you know. So I am looking forward to seeing that in the future. Price. The iPhone 14 Pro starts at $999 in the US and £1,099 in the UK for the base 128 gigabyte model with storage options up to one terabyte. Unlike most Android phones, there are no options for additional RAM beyond the base of approximately six gigabytes. So I think the Galaxy S22 Plus stands as the best comparison to the iPhone 14 Pro. Both start at $999, feature top-end screens, powerful cameras, and excellent processors. So should you buy the iPhone 14 Pro. So I think the iPhone 14 Pro is a sweet spot for the best of Apple's iPhone technology. This 6.1 inch device isn't too big and the front of it has been transformed, you know, with the new features of Dynamic Island and always on display. I think it maintains the performance lead or rivals with a faster, and more efficient A16 binary chip and the updated camera sensor should make most users happy. If however, you need the biggest iPhone screen available packed with the same specs and performance, then you're better off going for the 6.7 inch iPhone 14 Pro Max. The truth is these iPhones that come out every year are for people that are three to four iPhones behind, right? So for example, your boy has the iPhone XS Max. I've been rocking that since 2019. And I think that the 14 Pro competitor XS Max is a major upgrade. It's definitely a worthy upgrade for me. But if you're somebody that's on, you know, the 13 Pro, 13 Pro Max, or even a 12, possibly even the 11, you should skip this. I don't think you should be upgrading your iPhone every year personally. Like I said, I'm on the iPhone XS Max. It's it's huge. It's definitely huge. From the, the 120 hertz refresh rate on the on the screen, the ProMotion display, it's it's beautiful. Let me know if you guys are looking to buy the iPhone 14 Pro and what you think about the phone. Consider subscribing to the channel and check out my review of the Nothing Phone One. I'll see you guys there.